Okay, today I think you're in for a special treat. We have Ronnie Matthew Harris here with us today. Legacy Business League has done a Black History Month uh, series for the last several years. And this year, our theme is um, capturing our history through arts, artifacts, and preservation projects. And Ronnie has um, embarked on an initiative that I think the community needs to know about, and we want to learn how we can um, help support him. I'm going to learn a little about him as well as um, what he's been working on and, and why it's so important for us to really take the time um, to preserve uh, our culture and history and so many of the of the neighborhoods that um, extend throughout the Mississippi Gulf Coast. So welcome, Ronnie. Um, appreciate you for being here. We've been working on this for a little while. Um, tell us a little bit, you know, what you want us to know about about you, um, particularly that you, you're from the coast and, you know, why the Broadmoor area and Sora City is so important to you. Yeah, so thank you for having me. It's so good to be with you. Um, you're right, long time coming, but it, it's good to be with you. Um, it's, uh, it, it, it feels good to be back home. I, 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 I want to start by saying that. So, um, graduated from Gulfport High School, as you know, and I want to talk about it. It's just really good to be back home. Uh, well, you froze up. You having... froze up. So I mean, it probably um, didn't get your recording. I know that you said you, you, of course, I know that you went to Gulfport High School, but our viewers don't know. Ah. So, and so what'd you say right after that? I said, um, went on this long journey. <laughs> well, tell yeah. us again. Because <laughs> yeah. you froze yeah. up. <laughs> oh. oh, I froze. Yes. So I, I think when I think when I do my hand, so I, I should start over. Um, so <laughs> It, it is a pleasure to be with you. Um, it's good to be back home. It's, it's good to uh, be um, in community with folk I, I grew up with here on the Gulf Coast. So it's, it's exciting to be with you. Thank you for having me. Um, so for those that don't know, um, I am born and raised here. Uh, I have long said to anybody that would ask wherever they found me around the world uh, that I'm a son of the Mississippi soil, um, born and raised here. Uh, Grew up here, went to Gulfport High, um, was part of a, a two-time uh, state, a 5A state championship basketball team. Uh, I won't start there. Mm -hmm. um, but after graduating, I took a long uh, journey towards um, uh, the work I've been involved with for the last 30 years. And again, it's just good to, after having served in the military abroad, uh, went and studied at various institutions to include having studied in Scotland, uh, where I got a master's in community learning and development, which is their equivalent to like urban planning, public policy, um, and then have continued to do the work in communities around the world doing community development. Um, it is, um, again, a journey that I am grateful uh, has led me home. So it's, it's good Fantastic. to be here, good to be with you. Okay. Yeah. So so tell us about the initiative that you've embarked on, um, on which you've embarked to, I guess, revitalize the Sur City Broadmoor area. Um, and for those who don't know, where is, where could you give them a, a general geographic location of where that is? Yeah, I'll try and start, I'll try and stay objective and not make Sur City the, the gold I think it is to the city, but it's Um, east of downtown Gulfport, um, just a half a block north of the railroad tracks, you'll find historic Black Sura City. Uh, the coordinates I just gave you are really coordinates that are contemporary coordinates, because I would argue and history would tell a story uh, that Sura City once extended down to 90, the beach. Um, and those that live on 2nd Street um, can attest to that because their tax papers say Sura City. Um, so um, that being the case, though, historically, culturally, Sura City is north of the tracks, again, about 0.75 miles east of downtown Gulfport. Okay. Its proximity, its proximity to downtown Gulfport is what I think 
makes it such a gem um, because it's an opportunity for uh, the surrounding neighborhoods in and around Sur City to really uh, do whatever we can do to impact this community, to see it um, serve as a catalyst for people to live a more flourishing life. And so I'm, I'm motivated by that. Fantastic. What do, you, what do you envision for that area? Um, I envision a day where folk don't um, imagine Sur City in the light they do today. And I'm being very careful to not even repeat some of the negative uh, commentary you get when you hear people talk about Sur City, those that are from Gulf Forge and know the area. Mm. Um, so I envision the day where it won't be sort of seen in that light, but more, moreover, seen in the light that it was when I grew up or earlier than that. Um, it was a, a community that had thriving neighborhood business corridors. It was akin to uh, Harlem for an example. Uh, mm -hmm. Some folk talk about Tulsa, Oklahoma, and you know the thriving ethnic Black community that was there. Uh, to put it in a Gulfport context, folk know the quarters. Uh, the quarters is still got on a number of its neighborhood business corridors, thriving businesses, mm -hmm. um, whether it's funeral homes, and or uh, bars, nightclubs, you know. So what you will find, say, in a historic Black quarters uh, used to exist in Sur City and my vision, my hope, my dream is to see some of that be revived. Um, that the place is still there, some of the spaces are still there. Uh, what we need is the political will and the wherewithal for local folk in the neighborhoods to, to just desire it just as much and sure. roll up our sleeves to get, get to work to make it happen. Yeah, it, it's always good to hear about um, the neighborhoods and the people that supported uh, one another with the black owned businesses um, and to know that we actually help support industry, um, even the casino industry and tourism um, uh, on the Mississippi Gulf Coast, because obviously everybody knows we're equidistant from Mobile to New Orleans um, and those who traveled in to, um, you know, enjoy the water, uh, the, the across the tracks from the area that you're, that you're describing, um, that had the, the big hotels and the, the mansions and such, such, and we were the laborers who, who, who had, who helped sustain and support that, um, whether it's, you know, through um, being those who did the the cleaning or the the, the washing or you know the baking and and things like that, um, I, I found a lot of um, historical information that supports that if they did not have that um, sustainable labor, um, they wouldn't have survived. You know, so yeah. it's my understanding that um, people lived in those neighborhoods that supported um, that that area in the late, late, late 19, mid to late 1960s. Um, yeah. And then of course, people began to to, to move um, in, in other areas and there's some regentrification that's happened even in the Broadmoor area, I believe. Um, and maybe you could speak a little bit um, to that. Like what, what when, you, when we talk about re revitalizing the area, um, what what do you what do you see um, happening? I know there's a there's a building that you you now own, correct? And what do you see? What do you envision for that that hub that you're trying to create? Yeah, yeah um, I think it's important. I appreciate you bringing up that historical context. I think that's very helpful um, because one of the things I try to encourage people to do is to think about um, yesteryear. And as listening to you, I couldn't help but to remember. I reflect on, I hear echoed in my ear, uh, Martin Luther King, um, who said, you know, we are all tied together in a single garment of destiny. Uh, that is right around that time you just referenced, right? The mid 60s. So it's, it's not a surprise he would be talking in that way because he knew at the time that Georgians or those that lived in center city, Atlanta, and their vi the viability of their lives and, and what they did or had access to had a direct connection to the extent to which those who were white and or other ethnicities would experience a flourishing life. And I think it we, we have to get back there today where we 
Uh, and when I mean, when I say we, I mean local neighborhoods in Gulfport, like a sewer city, to understand um, that its destiny, its the, the extent to which it flourishes is interconnected with Broadmoor and vice versa. Mm -hmm. So one of the complex realities associated with my effort um, so I started a you know development firm Gillum Young Robinson and Harris is uh, the, the the name reflects my my four forebearers um, and and there's a whole story that go with that that I'd love to tell time permitting um, but the complexity of this development firm to purchase a piece of property on Kelly Avenue Kelly and 19th which is on the border between historic white Broadmoor and historic black Surat City. Mm -hmm. I mean, it is, uh, you know, my th this project can actually be put in the dictionary as an illustration of gerrymandering. Because when you look at where it is, across the street from me is a different ward, across the street from me is a different state district, across the street from me is a different uh, Senate district. Wow. Um, and so that, for some folk, might be all the, the, the ammunition they need to make the case for some negative stuff. Gerrymandering it still exists and this, that, and the other. And sure, <laughs> valid arguments. But it's not the one I'm interested in making. The one I'm interested in making is what might we do, I do, to invest in this space at this time in such a way to where it doesn't only uh, develop my building and or develop Kelly, this neighborhood business corridor or historic white Broadmoor, but it does the very same thing for historic black sewer city. And I would add um, under some contention for other folks, um, second street, um, second street is there, there block and a half from my building. So the extent to which we are successful to uh, establish a thriving business, which is what we're really trying to do, <laughs> um, the extent to which we establish a thriving business and even extend out to a business corridor, mm -hmm. um, in a sense, all boats have the potential to rise. Absolutely. And I say that because part of my task uh, that I take very personal is being being very careful to understand um, power dynamics, uh, how economics work. Um, we talk about gentrification all the time, but no one, a few I know, go upstream to see, well, how does it happen? When did it happen? What, what happened in terms of the community shift? Like, when did that tip, the yeah. tipping point, right? Uh, so part of my project, which I am most excited about, is I'm not just trying to establish a business by developing or restoring this brick and mortar in the Broadmoor store. I'm also spending my days meeting with folk and wrestling with what does it mean to engage Sioux City in a trauma-informed way. Trauma-informed. Okay, community. explain what that is. For yeah, those who don't have not, have not heard that term before, <laughs> yeah, or, or, what, or trauma, what that looks like, yeah, trauma informed community engagement. Uh, what I have done in that sentence is put together two big concepts that most folk are perhaps have heard of. So, community engagement, folk know that. Uh, trauma informed, there is trauma informed everything these days, right? Uh, in the medical field, they are ever increasingly trying to understand what does it mean to understand trauma, personal trauma that people come into the hospital, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, right? Uh, therapists are understanding, I can't just um, address the immediate problems this person is facing when they come in and talk to me about their marriage, for an example. I have to really try to begin to understand what might be some underlying trauma, right? Um, so, duh, it, it should come as a no-brainer that when you when you go into communities like Surrey City and historic Broadmoor, you had better been mindful of 
the multi levels of trauma these communities have experienced, right? And it's easy for us to talk about uh, the trauma in Sewer City. Uh, we could talk about the number of folk that have been shot and killed. We can talk about the number of folk that have uh, just wasted their life away, uh, given to drugs. Uh, we can talk about the people that have been displaced. Uh, we can talk about the lack of people, the lack of number of people that uh, own their home. Uh, are susceptible to all kinds of health disparities. We can go on and on and on to talk about the trauma year after year, generation after generation in Sewer City. But there's some folk in Broadmoor, historic white Broadmoor, that are, there's this one lady, uh, I won't give her a street, but there's this one lady um, in Bra historic Broadmoor. She's probably like 85 to 90 years old. And her door has these bars up akin to what you will see in the city of Chicago or Detroit or somewhere, right? Um, no knock on Chicago and Detroit. I've got a lot of things. <laughs> yeah, I was just like, hold up now. But, 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 but it, it's just this sense of anxiety around and fear around just being in community. Um, and and so my job, and I take it very seriously, my job is to really um, be a student of that, um, listen to people through that, um, come up with some innovative strategies to um, find solutions and, and partnerships that could help us overcome some of that. Um, so uh, there's a number of practical things we have done. I don't know if you want to sure. go into that, but like, well, yeah, we... I, I, what, what I, I can think, you know, what I want to do is to support you in making, seeing this come to fruition. And what mm. I would want people who are listening to understand is the why, you know, you, you, you mm. explain that, but you know, if this happens, how mm -hmm. will that help in the healing and um, addressing some of the things that you just you just talked about? Um, if you, you to your point, it's, it's not just about the building. It's not just about revitalizing the brick and mortar. But if you do that, if you do, you know, um, renovate it and open an eatery or use it as a place for music, if you have events, um, that will be a catalyst for what you're talking about. And so when I, when I, I want, I want to, you know, for people to understand if you accomplish this, how will it address some of the things that, that you talked about? And then how can we help? You know, if you, if you had, um, you came across someone that had a, a, you know, magic wand and, and they could grant you your wish, what would you be asking them for? Mm. That's a very good question. Um, uh, one of the things that I would ask them for is to have some expectations coming in, uh, some, some reasonable, realistic expectations coming in. And those expectations, I would ask, would, would, would have to do with expectations uh, regarding return on investment. Right. So like if and when you invest in a community like these, you can't expect that the return on investment is going to be akin to what you would get in other communities. Um, what you invest in New York, for an example, no one would presume you could expect the same return on investment in the state of Mississippi. And so to invest in Sur City and Broadmoor. Uh, these interconnected communities measure expectations in light of the context. Um, so that's the first thing I would say. Uh, secondarily, I would say um, be open to um, self-determination. Be open to allowing the local folk to speak into what we're doing, which is why uh, some folk are frustrated with me regardless to time. Ronnie, You've been working on this for a couple of years now. What's going on? I'm like, <laughs> so it's interesting that for 50 years, this building has laid dormant. Mm -hmm. Nothing's gone on on this street. And now you guys want me to do it overnight. Yep. You know, 
um, and and entrepreneur Negro. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay. You, you you could you could you could translate that if you want yes. to. Yeah. Um, but 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 a struggling entrepreneur for those in the room that didn't get that cultural reference. Um, mm -hmm. Measure expectations, um, because if you don't, we can lose patience, and I think it could shipwreck, shipwreck the project. Um, however, what we come to, ultimately, is a capitalist concept. We need money. Invest money. So that person with that wand, write me a check. <laughs> um, because it takes money to make money, and it will take um, about $898,000 to make this first phase of this development on this commercial corridor happen. And right now, uh, we have an application sitting before the Gulf Coast Restoration Funds or the state, state legislature. Uh, and it is in this session that they will, um, they, they will decide whether or not they're gonna allocate funds towards this project. And so if that one is in the hands of somebody that vote for any one of these persons that are members of the Southern delegation, give them a call, text them. Um, that can be your Fantastic. action, point of action. Uh, if you are one of those state legislatures, I'd love to talk to you about ways you can feel um, more apt and able to go ahead and support this project. Um, so that's what I would, I would wish. And the 800, plus dollars would pay for the renovation of the brick and mortar, the landscaping, um, what, what just the, I mean, cause that, that, you know, we all know that that takes money. Um, yeah. and after that is done, what is that? Even though, even though you've said, you know, managing expectations is the, is the first part, then what, you know, again, let's tie it back to the trauma, um, that you, hope to help others heal from which you hope other you know want to help others heal how is that going to all tie in and weave in together um i love it mm -hmm. i love it so part of that eight hundred and ninety eight thousand dollars uh is to pay for and includes what we call a trauma informed community reinvestment plan i dare you I dare anybody to go and find a Gulf Coast Restoration Fund application that included such a thing, where you were not only going to take this public funding and develop something, but that you were going to leave with the local community something that was sustainable over time, that would just recreate opportunity year after year after year. Um, so. I would encourage anybody that's listening, uh, it's public records, our application, you can pull it up. Uh, the Mississippi Development Authority, uh, go to the Gulf Coast Restoration Fund uh, and you can find this year's application. Among them, you'll find our project on the name uh, Gulfport Gaslight District. And if you tap on that, you can, you can see what we wrote uh, to the state legislature and okay. part of what we wrote to them is to say is to say hey will you fund this first phase but included in that is a deep dive in the community working with people to put up the plan and that plan i'd love to talk about it a little uh, there are some historic gems in sewer city that have been laying dormant for 60 years and that just should not be so this reinvestment plan would pull people together to partner to make that not so. Okay, that that that's yeah. the, the longevity like down the road, the roadmap. That's right. Um, that's right. Because there, there, quite frankly, there are a lot of people that are looking for money, whether it's the grant or um, you know, private funding to yeah. renovate. Um, but I think yeah. that's the message: is that this isn't just about a building. This is about um, Rebuilding oh, a lifestyle, yeah. a culture. Um, Absolutely. Uh, Absolutely. You know, people are yeah. empowered in this. I, 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 I'm, you know, I, I, I'm, you know, I, I'm bound to try to be humble. I want to be humble about it. But 
I think this is a model. I think this could be a model, not just, not only in Gulfport, but along the coast and across America. I've worked in a number of communities and seen how a developer like myself or others can build a building. I got some examples for anybody that want to offline, give me a call and talk about it. There's some examples on the coast where people put millions into building a building, establishing a building, brick and mortar, but it did nothing a block away. It did nothing to sustain a flourishing life for the people in the neighborhood. Uh, everything about this, I word Smith this application to the T, everything about it is to give back today, tomorrow, in the years to come, and in the years I'm long gone, uh, I want people to not know Ronnie Matthew Harris um, and or even Gillum Young Robinson and Harris, but they're going to know that, wow, I can go up the street and, and there's some uh, healthy food options. I can go up the street and I can, I can listen to some, uh, you know, some, some jazz or some blues, you know. Uh, so many people on the Gulf Coast don't know that we have this amazing history with regard to the Chitlin circuit. Sure. Uh, I'd, I'd, I'd love for this Gulfport Gas Life District to be that offering. I've had friends, and I'll cut it short. I've had friends come to the coast without me and say, Ronnie, I've been Googling for, for, for the black spots, yo. What, <laughs> what's up, man? You know, and I'm like, well, bro, um, you know, Elaine, you know, go hit up Elaine's. You know, my guy <laughs> yeah. runs it. You know, he 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 he's a good guy. Yeah. Uh, t tell him I sent you. He's gonna take care of you. You yeah. know, uh, there's Rip's place. So we've got some spots, but um, I think we have some missed opportunities, and I'd like to see uh, this one um, come to pass. Okay. Well, is there anything more that you want to, to tell us about yourself or about the project as we um, wind down? Um, I, I think in closing, one of the things I would say is um, thank you. Uh, thank you for your work. Um, I've been watching from afar. Uh, so many of us um, took off, uh, went and did all kinds of things in these big cities doing these big things around the world. <laughs> Um, which I think is all myth, by the way. Uh, so I was in part being facetious. Um, but but I've always been mindful and had my my eye back, you know, looking at home. And I really appreciate the uh, the legacy you're leaving and that you have put your hand to the plow and others like you, people that partner with you every day. And I could name some of those. Um, thank you guys for what you do because it's going to take us, a village, uh, to do this stuff. I, I very well might be, as of right now, uh, sort of chairing uh, this particular effort, um, but I long for the day um, that that's not the case because I don't believe sustainable community development happens with some point person personality. It's why, you know, some folks say, well, Ronnie, we need you on the news. We need you to be out there up front. We need, they need to know you. I'm like, no, they need to know the project. They need to know the problem. They need to yeah. know the issue. So they I'm still, grateful you still for need the work. To be, you know, as a PR person, you still need to be out there. I'm one of those and, people, and, so. And, and, and I, I wrote that down. I, okay. I, I, take, I, I take your counsel and I appreciate that. Yeah. But thank you for the work you do. And this opportunity. And I think it was just a perfect topic for obviously Black History Month, um, the preservation of what um, of the of a culture, you know, on the Mississippi Gulf yeah. Coast. It's, it, it is important, and I appreciate you sharing the initiative. So you hang hang tight for me um, after we say goodbye, and because um, I have some more comments for you. But um, thank you all for tuning in. Uh, we have a, 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 a different topic every day for this week for our Black History um, Month. Uh, initiative and um, I look forward to speaking to other other folks and and to really kind of pulling this whole concept together um, this year um, because it you know it's important to talk about these things and to and to keep it all to the fore. Thank you, Ronnie. Thank you.